for the Obama administration still reeling today, trying to deal with three big controversies and the question of whether those scandals could derail the president's second term agenda. Kristen Welker is live at the White House this morning with the very latest. Kristen, good morning. Erica, good morning to you. You're right. That is the question. This was arguably one of President Obama's worst weeks to date, and it ended with a contentious congressional hearing and the outgoing IRS commissioner under fire. In his weekly address, President Obama tried to shift focus away from the mounting controversies and back to the economy. More than anything, the American people make me optimistic about where we're headed as a nation. But nothing could overshadow the fireworks on Capitol Hill Friday when acting IRS Commissioner Stephen Miller, who offered his resignation earlier this week, testified under oath. We centralized cases based on political activity. Miller apologized for not revealing earlier that Tea Party and other conservative groups applying for tax-exempt status have been targeted for extra scrutiny. The tactic was a foolish mistake, Miller said, but not a case of politics. Why did you mislead Congress and the American people on this? Mr. Chairman, I did not mislead Congress nor the American people. I answered the questions as they were asked. This after the White House trying to tamp down criticism over its response to the Benghazi attack released 100 pages of emails and notes on Wednesday. And the president also came under fire this week for the Justice Department's widely criticized seizure of journalists' phone records. How do you feel about comparisons by some of your critics of this week's scandals to those that happened under the Nixon administration? Well, yeah, I'll let you guys engage in those comparisons. According to some political analysts, the scandals could threaten the president's second term agenda. He's got a relatively limited window in his second term to get things done, and this is eating into it. And many agree the IRS controversy could have the most staying power because the agency impacts average Americans. The White House knows that this IRS controversy is one that's got the most political resonance, it's the easiest to understand, and it's one that could be the most damaging. Another reason the IRS scandal has staying power, Friday's hearing will likely be the first in what will be a series of hearings and investigations. White House officials say they and the president learned about the IRS targeting last week. Erica. Kristen Welker at the White House this morning. Kristen, thank you. John Harwood is CNBC's chief Washington correspondent joining us now with more on this. John, good morning. So when you look at these scandals here, the IRS, Benghazi, uh, those AP issues, is the White House handling this correctly? It's hard to say whether they're handling it correctly, Erica, until more time passes and we see the president's political standing. What we can say is that they ended the week on a very aggressive note. They were slow on IRS, but they said they waited until they got the IG's report. Then they fired Stephen Miller, the guy who testified yesterday. Uh, so that was a decisive step. The president also rejected calls for a special counsel, fears that that could bog him down later on. On Benghazi, they finally released those emails under pressure after Republicans had uh, done some political maneuvering to put out their uh, stories about the Benghazi attack. And on the uh, AP phone records case, can't talk about it much because it's a, a secret investigation, but they did lay out their rationale and support a shield law, which uh, had foundered early in, in his administration. What does this do, though, to that second term agenda and to things that were starting to work their way through Washington? Well, it potentially could interfere with his agenda. But remember, Republicans themselves have powerful incentives to cooperate with him on some issues like immigration. They need that to broaden their party base. Uh, and on the budget deficit, the debt uh, deal that is potentially going to ripen later in the year, both sides have got to get something done. They've got to raise the debt limit. They have reasons to work together even as they fight on these issues. And there's even been some caution. As much as there is a fair amount of red meat, as we say here for Republicans, there was caution this week from senior members of the party, from former, former Speaker Newt Gingrich, about sort of tempering expectations here and being a little bit more, more conservative in the way that they're going after these things. No question about it. They saw under Newt Gingrich that it backfired in 1998 when they overplayed their hand against Bill Clinton. And remember, the problem for the Republican Party is not that their base is not fired up enough about uh, disliking President Obama and what Democrats stand for. Their problem is their base isn't wide enough. They need to bring more people in. And there's a real question as to whether they go so aggressively on this that they impede their efforts to change their party in a way that makes it more appealing to more people. How are, how are both of these, how are all of these issues, rather, I should say, affecting what the American people think about both the administration and Republicans? Either one coming out ahead at this point in terms of public opinion? 
Well, clearly the IRS has the most staying power. Let's just parse them for a moment. On the AP phone records, that is a legal and policy choice the administration made in a case they can't talk a whole lot about. But there's not much evidence that the public's going to be very upset, even though those of us in journalism may be, just as the public wasn't all that upset with enhanced interrogation when President Bush was. They want a president to be forward-leaning on investigations. On Benghazi, that was a horrible security failure, but we knew that on day one. And the more we learn about the aftermath, the less it looks like a scandal and the more it looks like typical bureaucratic and public relations maneuvering. On the IRS, clearly the conduct was improper. If it was improper for a partisan motive, that's really bad and contrary to American traditions. And if it was both of those things and the White House was involved, it could be extremely damaging to the president. But those haven't been proven yet, even though many Republicans assume and believe it's true. John Harwood, always nice to have you here. Thank you.